Cases. I work for Digital Defense and I do API integrations, so we're going to kick it off. Okay. Um, my name's Danny, Danny Santander. Uh, I came from Tucson, Arizona. I also work with Digital Defense doing API integrations. I just started maybe not even a year ago um, working on their enterprise risk assessment tool, and now I'm full time with Gunner doing API teaming. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, first, let's talk about vulnerability management, exactly what is vulnerability management. It's basically the process of identifying, classifying, and providing any mitigation solutions for vulnerabilities found. These vulnerabilities could be any weaknesses or flaws within an asset on a network, or any sensitive information that is exploited or exposed to a threat. Vulnerabilities can be detected through vulnerability scanners that scan the network, analyzing any uh, information and any threats on your network. Um, frequent scanning ensures new vulnerabilities are found. You're only able to find these new vulnerabilities once you scan your network. So it's very important to scan frequently and often. And let's get into some benefits and limitations of vulnerability management systems. Some benefits is that it's up-to-date scans for known vulnerabilities. This means we're constantly updating our dictionary where the scanner is searching for vulnerabilities that are known. So if there's a zero-day vulnerability, it's, we're getting that update as soon as possible. Uh, quantify the risk status of devices. What we do is when we scan, for vulnerabilities, we categorize them on a scale of either low, medium, high, or critical. Um, easy to automate scans and reports, which you can schedule scans, you can schedule specific scans, you can schedule a range of IPs on the network. Some limitations is uh, proposes solutions but does not apply them. So we propose mitigating solutions, but the vulnerability management system itself doesn't remediate them and apply the mitigations. Vulnerabilities are only made uh, known once scanned. This is what I mentioned earlier. You're only able to find the vulnerabilities once you scan your network. So in between scans, vulnerabilities may emerge, and that can be a problem. We'll get into that later. Historical correlation of vulnerabilities is a challenge, meaning that if you find a vulnerability within an asset on your network, it might be difficult for you to trace back uh, trace backwards to that asset to see if when or how it got vulnerable. We'll get into that also later too. So let's talk about the frequency and how important it is. Infrequency of vulnerability scanning disadvantages. This is on a time schedule throughout the year. So let's say you're only scanning quarterly, so four times a year. So in January, you scan and you find four vulnerabilities. You decide to mitigate those vulnerabilities. February, you have none. But in March, there's three vulnerabilities that have popped up that you're unaware of because you haven't scanned. You're only scanning in Mar January and April. So once you scan in April, you'll see seven vulnerabilities compared to zero when you mitigated all four since January and so on and so forth. If you don't scan May, June, those vulnerabilities, new vulnerabilities may emerge that you're unaware of until July. You mitigate some, but new vulnerabilities emerge, and so on and so forth. So it's very important to scan your assets on the network frequently. Now I'll get into the historical correlation of vulnerabilities. Let's say, again, we're on a timeline of one year going into quarters, quarter one, two, three, four. Let's say in the first quarter, you update a software, software X, uh, which has a zero day vulnerability, which no one knows about it yet, it's unknown, except some attackers or hackers. They're the ones that have the ability to gain access and control into your system. So vulnerability managements aren't detected have not detected this vulnerability yet on the new update of Software X. In quarter two, you have an attacker that exploits the vulnerability and the system is now infected. In quarter three, still the vulnerability is unknown since zero day, but there is a patch or it's been updated and the software is removed 
so vulnerability doesn't show up, but it was still vulnerable in quarters one, two, and three before the patch. In quarter four, the vulnerability now is finally public. People know about it. People are aware about it. You scan in quarter four, the vulnerability pops up. Everyone knows about it. It's on your system. Now, though, if you here's where the historical correlation comes into effect for the challenge. You're not able to go back and check if it was vulnerable in quarter one since it was undetected. Um, so those are the challenges we have with vulnerability management systems. And now we're gonna get into some integration causes and cases starting off with network access control. So a uh, network access control device, just like a vulnerability management system, is a security solution that on its own is great. And with network access control, um, you are able to enact policies on your network. This allows you to keep new hosts off, only let certain people on or certain IPs into critical sections of your system. Um, anywhere that is important for security purposes, you know, you kind of restrict access to it, don't let anything get anywhere near it. Um, and devices may be refused access completely if, like I said, you had a new host who joins your network and you're unsure whether they're secure yet. Um, maybe it's some guest laptop that just hops on. You don't know what they're going to be trying to do. Um, here we get into the benefits and limitations of a network access control system. Some of the benefits are you can restrict, as I was talking about, who gets onto your network. Um, you can remove assets if you know they pose risk. So if someone does have a known vulnerability on their laptop, you can go ahead and kick them off. Um, you can identify all devices that connect to your network just keeping logs, there's many ways to keep that. Um, some limitations are that vulnerable um, hosts may still be given access. You're never sure if a laptop is secure on its own through this system, so they could be you know, an authorized user but still be vulnerable and get access to your system. Um, access can be denied to authorized users if they do have some other limiting factor due to a policy that restricts their access, then they no longer can make changes. Um, and then limited capability to make access decisions. What this is is basically there's a few guidelines, rules, policies that you can make that say either you have access or you don't. It's, it's a black or white, there's no gray scenario there where it can kind of think for itself and, and decide if this user should be on the network or should not. Um, so here we have a just basic diagram of network access control. You have all your hosts or assets down on the bottom and a network access control device that limits them from being able to talk to other parts of your network. So they're kind of restricted to their own area. They're kind of quarantined off of any other part of the network in their own section. Um, so next we're gonna talk about why the integration between a vulnerability management system and a network access control device makes an even better security solution. So the use cases for this is that um, a VM solution is able to identify vulnerabilities on devices. And if you pair that with the ability to lock people out of your network, that's a pretty powerful tool. If someone has a critical vulnerability that could let someone exploit it and gain access to your network, they can be restricted access and no longer allowed onto the network. Um, by providing risk status is how that's gonna happen, um, importing the vulnerability data into the network access control gives it more decision making than it's limited already black and white scenario and now has the option of if they're infected, if they pose a risk to my system, if they might harm anyway any other device on the network, don't let them in. So um, new devices that connect to the network as well can now be instead of permanently denied access can instead through the vulnerability management system have a scan launched on them automated, sends it to the vulnerability management system, and it then goes down, looks at the device, and says if it's clear or not. So we have a diagram of this going through right here. Um, the vulnerability management system we're describing is Frontline VM. And going through, we have a new device connects to the network. It's currently unknown. We're not sure if there's any vulnerabilities on it. It could pose a risk, potentially. Um, what the network access control is gonna do is ask the vulnerability management system if there are any known IDs about this host, if it knows about it, if it's vulnerable at all. Um, it's gonna go ask its scanner to perform a scan on this device, which it goes down to and 
looks at, scans the ports, checks if there's any malicious data coming out of it, and then returns to the scanner and then back into the vulnerability management system. Um, once it's there, it can then continue back to the network access control and communicate between the two if it is a risk or if it's not, if it's safe to let onto the network, it accepts it in. So now that device has access in an automated fashion that doesn't pose a risk. All right, and so now we're on to the next use case. So here's another security solution that might um, benefit from implementing with vulnerability management, security information and event management, uh, usually called a SIM. And what exactly is a SIM? It's used to collect, manage, analyze, and prioritize any type of security-related data uh, from logs, events, and, pro and also provides real-time threat analysis, ticketing, and incident responses. SIM systems uh, deploy collector agents either remotely or on-premise space to gather data from various uh, asset sources within the network. These SIM collectors, once they collect the log information and data, they send the events to the centralized management console, which is then prioritized on a set of rules created by the user. Now to get into some benefits and limitations of a SIM. A uh, SIM can increase efficiency, which means by assembling security data, or relevant event logs, and um, from multiple sources across your network, it might be easier for IT compliance on the bottom to create reports. Real-time security incidents response uh, quickly reduce the impact of any security threats, automated also. Some limitations of a SIM, too much noise data, you're constantly collecting log data from all your assets uh, within the network. There's a lot of uh, information to process. Uh, some of that data is not even actionable for threat management. Uh, let's see, it requires a lot of maintenance and monitoring. You need a professional to sift through this data, to create rules, to constantly be, constantly be looking at the alerts and events populated by the SIM. Lack of necessary information, poorly designed rules, connected to the last point. Uh, attacks necessarily don't leave log data, not all attacks. That's where a SIM can help be integrated with. Let's get into the actual network of a SIM. So let's say you have a set of assets that are connected to the internet, usually behind uh, some firewall on a network. These assets individually send event and log data to your SIM connector. Once sent, the SIM connector sends that data to the SIM database or the SIM server, or the centralized management connector and it prioritizes those events. Some benefits of integrating with vulnerability management is vulnerability management identifies vulnerabilities on the network alongside the SIM technology. Again, not always the SIM will be picking up vulnerabilities. Those vulnerabilities might not leave log data or not have log data. Um, send vulnerability information to the SIM's centralized management system. This way, so once the vulner vulnerabilities are sent to the system, you're able to pri prioritize those vulnerabilities along with the log data. And here's the integration diagram of a SIM network with vulnerability management. We have our same network with the access behind the firewall on the network sending event log data to a SIM collect connector. That SIM connector sending data to the SIM database except now we have a, a vulnerability management scanner connected to the network. This will scan all assets on your network, send any data, including vulnerability data, host data, open port data, scanning data, to uh, frontline vulnerability management. In return, that will send that data to the integration with SIM through the connector, and then to the database to get prioritized. We have our next one. So our next use case is called our esoteric one, and this is kind of a more advanced one, kind of still a researching topic for us. 
one that we're looking into is deception technology because it's kind of um, considered up and coming almost um, a new way of doing security in your system of not just um, mitigating everything because somehow an unknown will happen and they will get through your system. So these and the deception technology case is meant to provide fake hosts, fake assets on your system that kind of don't act as honeypots to kind of lure in. They're, they look real, they act real, they're receiving real data back and forth, um, but they're fake. So any penetration that gets to them is receiving fake data instead of your critical data that you have on your system. Um, so it provides awareness of malicious activity within your internal network by, once it is alerted by itself to whether someone is hacking into it, accessing it unauthorized, it kind of quarantines itself from the rest of the network and it doesn't alert them, it just sits there and monitors. Logs how they're attacking, what they're doing to get into your system um, in order to kind of in an automated way block that next time. So it's not a shield up front, it's, it's let them in but don't let them get your critical data. Um, decoys are contained in real assets on your network. So once we get into the drawbacks on this, that's one of them is that you do have to use more resources with this kind of integration or with this kind of uh, technology that if, I, oh, if um, you need a bunch of decoys in order to kind of protect your real assets, it increases your resource load almost exponentially just because for one real asset you may want 10 decoys just for the amount of security that could provide maybe more. All right, and so here we have just kind of a little diagram because the um, decoys, as we call them, surround the host in a sense. And so just, you know, shields up, red alert, protect your system by having fakes there. Some benefits of this are that you allowed to monitor the attacker as they come in. Instead of fully rebuffing them and letting them try again with something new that you may not know, you instead capture them, watch them, and log that behavior for next time. Um, you can lure attackers away from your important assets with the idea that it's real data they're getting into and possibly mitigating the fact that they would get to a real system next time. Um, some limitations are that they do, again, require additional resources in order to have all these extra decoy hosts. Um, you must have similar levels of activity on your network to these hosts in order to have the idea that they are real, that you're communicating with them, that your data is being transferred to them and they do little to prevent attacks from occurring. They are decoys, and so if they do hit the real one, they've got through data. So through deception technology, this is how it works, is the attacker initially gets into your system and moves along laterally until it finds a decoy host, which it then gets trapped at and is monitored. It's a trap. And so once they're there, they're kind of stuck. They're not allowed to move any further into your network and are monitored. So the use case of integrating it with a vulnerability management system to create a better security solution is that a VM can provide additional vulnerability data to these decoy assets. So when they're being created, um, they kind of are smarter now in a way of, they know what vulnerabilities are on your system and what the attackers might be trying to exploit to get in. And so that's what they're looking for now. Instead of maybe everything, they're more refined onto certain topics. Um, and it allows decoys to be placed closer to expected intrusion points. So you can't always mitigate a frontline vulnerability and sometimes it has to be left open so you can place decoys near where you know you have issues in your system. Um, you can conserve resources by possibly having less decoys now that you know the vulnerabilities of your system and what channels attackers are more than likely to use. So in conclusion, we're just gonna kind of wrap through some more of the use case stuff on these and the benefits of why we're going through these integrating with different security solutions to make a better version because um, vulnerability management on its own is great. Uh, network access controls are great. Deception technology, SIMs, they're all great. Everyone uses them. Um, we're talking about how to use them together though because you're using two really great systems but not putting them together is kind of wasting the data from both. Um, using them together, it allows you to form a more complete security on your system. So, 
So yeah, so when you're integrating with vulnerability management, um, with other security solutions, you're also combining uh, remedies or remediations and even also solutions to mitigate those that vulnerability management cannot. An example might be for SIM. SIMs don't need to be scheduled to be scanning your network. They don't need um, a set time or a range. They're just constantly logging data. And um, as with vulnerability management, you need to set those scans. You need to scan to find these vulnerabilities. But for vulnerability management, you can also provide solutions to mitigate those type of vulnerabilities where SIMs are just basically sort of like a ticketing system, but they're more of an alerting system, alerting you, hey, we found this in your logs. Um, so there's advantages to both, but there's even be bigger benefits when you're integration, when you're integrating with both of those solutions. I don't want to talk about integrating with Mac. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, I'm going to jump back to the network access control real quick, if I can. So, um, with the network access control integration to vulnerability management, the key point here to go over is that the scans on the system are automated. So before everything that you had to do was kind of user-based, giving access to everyone. Um, are they authorized? Does the user have credentials? Are they vulnerable on your system? Is the system they're bringing going to be a threat? Um, by integrating two key security solutions, it allows um, this to become automated and kind of without the human error to it um, and bringing in secure hosts only, allowing access to only those that you actually want on your network. And uh, yeah, I think that's. Yeah, I think we finished pretty, pretty earlier than <laughs> yeah. expected. Um, are there any questions about this system, integrating systems with key solutions? All right, thank well, you. thank you for your time.